G'day viewers, it's Michael here again for Single Racer and welcome back to what should be my final official non-VR video which will be in two parts discussing the simple question is bonnet view or hood view the best FOV of all? And in this first video I'll be doing my very best impression of a debating team arguing for the affirmative uh, suggesting why I think it's the best view of all and some analysis and video replays uh, as a way to try and argue my point and in the second video I'll be doing a kind of proof of purchase to just to show you what uh, why, or why I think it is the best view of all and so as I'm encouraging not only uh, seasoned sim racers who would know what FOV stands for. I'm also trying to encourage uh, beginners and newbies into our sim racing fold and for those people FOV simply stands for field of view which is in simple terms the view you see either at your windscreen or through your monitor that represents the track and uh, surrounding world of that track. And so now this video comes about because of an excellent video that was done by Mike Smith over at Sim Racing 604. Uh, in fact, it's one of my favorite videos he ever did, but it comes from the point of view of looking at field of view or FOV as a mathematical formula. In other words, how far away you sit from your monitor, how big your monitor is and a couple of other equations that I can't recall right now but I'll leave a link in the description to that excellent video but the thing is as good as that video was it was totally pointless to me because I am coming at it from a totally different point of view so I want to discuss essentially four reasons uh, that I feel that you have a field of view and within those four reasons there are a lot of variations of those four and so I'll be discussing now those four individually and giving you some video examples of what I'm talking about within those four and let's see if we can sort this all out so let's move on now to the first example Okay folks, so now I'm in a paused replay of one of my favourite cars, uh, or as a group, the Mazda MX-5. This is the Cup car. And I'm in Assetto Corsa's uh, Nordschleifer. But just for the record, my argument about using a bonnet or hood view as the best P uh, uh, FOV is in relation to any game. So whatever game gives me a bonnet view, I will use it. And so although I'm using Assetto Corsa to explain this, it's not Assetto Corsa exclusive. It's in regard to any sim racing game that will allow me to have a bonnet view. Okay, so the first of the four choices that I'm going to, I'm going to use three using this same uh, set up corner in the same car but that's because it gives me the best uh, the MX-5 being so much like a true street car gives me the best example of explaining the three of the four reasons that I think you would use FOV and the first one is actually arguably also an exclusive in that it's a creator one and what I mean by that is as much as I love watching other uh, sim racing channels videos, I really enjoy reading the comments underneath because it helps me learn how hopefully to be a better channel myself. And one of the most common things, <laughs> apart from how uh, what are the uh, physics like and how does she handle and does this game handle better than this game, other than that argument, uh, the the be the next most common um comment or actual request is to say oh i like your hot lap but could you please do it next time with the uh gear 
icon on so that I can see what gears you're using or if that's on, um, could you please put the brake and pedal app on so I can see what you're doing. So let me do that here as an example. So if I put the gear and the brake uh, accelerator apps on so that people can see what you're doing, then to me the first reason that you use FOV is, actual, is actually as a creator. So if I go down here to the helmet icon, uh, just bear with me while I find it, there it is there, then to me when someone says I want to see what gears and uh, how you apply the brake and the pedal, one thing that I try to do for them is then move the, um, sorry I'll reset that, I picked the wrong one, but move the camera right back or more or less say even maybe a bit closer but like that so they can see how I'm handling the wheel. So if I now turn that off again and I start the replay, I, they can see what my input is. So this is the first reason that you would have this type of, of FOV and that's just purely as a creator to allow your subscribers to see how you're in inputting this corner. So how do I take the corner? What gear do I change down to? How do I take this next set of corners? Okay, the subscriber can go, oh, I think I can do that. Change their setup or however they do it themselves and try and apply that um, feature. So the wheel, to me, is very important to see you, you, the whole input as well as just the brake and the accelerator and the gearing that you're using. So let's move on now to the next one. Okay, so now I've reset the replay back again and this would be the second of four reasons that you might have a an FOV or field of view. And that is simply as the driver yourself in that you might choose to feel that all that is important to you is to have a realistic feeling that you're in the car, like you're truly driving this race sim and you're having a great time, whether online or by yourself. So in that case, what you might do then is move a little closer than if you were a creator trying to show the wheel so that you feel, okay, now I'm in the position uh, that where I feel like I'm sitting in the car you might, as you know, and this is personal preference, of course, you might turn everything off like I have here. So I go from an example of all the apps on like this where I'm racing online to uh, nothing at all. And then I simply, as a buyer of this racing game, race away and I have that feeling, yes, I'm in the cockpit uh, driving like I'm driving a real car and I have to say just for the record Project Cars 2 for me I've never wanted to race this way it's just a personal choice I prefer that bonnet hood view but I have to say Project Cars 2 does something unique even over a set of Corsa I'm afraid where I love their cockpit views I don't know what they do differently but it's the first time ever that I really wanted to be driving in cockpit view, especially in VR. So let's move on now to the third of these four reasons. Okay, so now I've reset back just a, a little bit earlier than uh, the previous two, and this is for the third reason why you have FOV, and it is the main reason you have FOV. And uh, just to remind you again, I'll have a link to the brilliant... Uh, video that Mike Smith did over at Simracing 604 and it has to do with the true reason you have field of view and that is that you're trying to make the objects that you see now out of this windscreen be their arguably correct size. And so now I can't replicate this in so I'll just kind of pretend if you can go along with me. So like I said, as a creator point of view, you might exaggerate that so that as a viewer, they can see your will input. 
then you come closer as the viewer to feel like you're driving a real car. So the third one becomes a mathematical formula where you take your field of view that you can often set in game. So by default in the Seto Corsa, I think it's 56, at least mine is. And you can come a bit closer. And the idea there is that as a mathematical formula that Mike talks about where you talk about the distance that your nose is from your monitor and the size of your monitor, it creates a formula that lets you as close as possible see things. So if I if I switch that off now and start the video, so I deliberately started this a bit earlier to say, so as I'm coming into the corner and I've got the correct field of view, I can best understand how that sharp that corner is so I can take the corner and now when I turn the corner and come under the bridge the bridge looks real real in the sense of its correct size and as I take each corner now coming down the hill I feel that for this mathematical formula that you know I'm the correct distance away or wherever I'm sitting not the correct distance but the whatever position that I'm sitting away from my own personal monitor and the size of that monitor I'm getting now the correct field of view from the game telling me subconsciously that everything I see around me including the trees and the barriers are all the correct size and that is the true reason that you have FOV but I have a slightly different reason and it's just a selfish personal reason so now I'll move on to that with some completely different examples. So as this car turns the corner to go down the hill, let's move on to that last and final uh, reason. Okay folks, so now we've reset to roughly around the same position, but this time in my favorite car in the game, the Ferrari 458 GT2 car. And I want to use this uh, as an example about my argument about using bonnet view. And my argument comes from the point of view that when I'm doing hot lapping, so you're talking about, say, trying to personally break your PB time, your, you know, your personal best, you're, you're absolutely going for it. I feel then that bonnet view gives me the best way of doing that now again this is a personal point of view but when i race that way i eliminate the other three reasons i'm not worried about a creator because all i'm trying to do is break a pb i'm not worried about uh trying to just feel like i'm in a realistic car because i i'm i'm not worried about that and the most important of all is i don't care actually if the trees and the curbs and all that look realistic because when I drive this way, I feel they do anyway, but it's for the sole purpose of being able to spot apexes, approach corners in the correct speed, and all those types of racing things like that, that I feel the bonne view is uh, the best. Now, I don't personally have anything against uh the, this cockpit view. In fact, I think uh, in a lot of ways it could be fantastic, but it's just something I never did right from the start. So maybe it's just the training that I got used to the bonnet view. But the trouble is when you come to certain cars, and this is why I want to now use this example. So here I am in my favorite car, which by the way, I have raced in cockpit view, and I'll start the replay and the thing about this car is I can clearly see the apex. I can get a feeling of how much speed I'm carrying down this hill and into the corners. And the most important of all probably, and that's why I picked this particular set of corners, it's the flow through when I talk about my slow in fast out. So how, how fast do I come into here, kill enough speed where I can take the corner and not slide off as I've often done in this bit, but still now get maximum speed out of this corner. Now, my point for this final argument, and that this will close this part of the two-parter video, is that that's well and fine in this car, because this car allows me to see so much of the track. 
Let's move on to a car that doesn't. Okay viewers, so now I'm in a different car and when I race online on the online Assetto Corsa servers, I have kind of a mental list of cars that I like to pick from if they're available just before I join the server. And this is one of them, it's called the P4-5 Competizione, or however you might pronounce that. And it's a great car, providing that I drive it the way I do, which is the bonnet view. So what I want to show you here is the problems that you can run into when you're using a cockpit view trying to beat your time. Now again, I don't want to knock anyone who does this because you're probably just used to it. It's, it's great. All I want to do is present an, a different argument to say that maybe bonnet view is worth a go. Give it a go. If you don't like it, come back to cockpit cockpit view um, I did the same I tried cockpit view for but specifically for trying to beat personal best times and I, I didn't like it and went back that's the great thing thing about sim racing is we can just tick those little boxes or untick those little boxes and make the choices we like to make but let me now show you um, as in a visual example how hard it is for me to see the apex because there's so such a narrow window that I'm struggling in this view, and again, this is a personal view, to really see the apex. And what I mean by that is the apex as it comes underneath the front wheels. So there's so much car here, and especially like if you've ever driven the hybrids in Project Cars 2 or this game, that you struggle to actually see the apex of the curb because the huge uh, bo um, scoops over the wheels, the front wheels, block your view. And have a look how narrow that window is. Now, this is just a personal view again, but now let me show you what that looks like in cockpit view. Uh, sorry, in, I'll say that again, in um, bonnet view. Okay, so now we've reset. We're ready to go and I want you to, to see here like how narrow that view is. And now what I'll do is I'll simply change the different choices to a bonnet view. And now what I'm looking at is I'm looking at as though I'm sitting literally over the front wheels and I want to see the curbs, the apexes, the speed I'm coming in. And let's have a go at this in sleep. So I can clearly see the apex, although I missed that, but that's just my poor driving, that's not the car. And so now I can visually very clearly see all the curbs, all the apexes, especially here as I come in, I can sight that curb and run over the top of it. So I, I literally almost see physically like I'm sitting over the curb the ones that you need to run over and see how I can really put the wheel on because I'm virtually level with the wheel and see the the um, apexes and the curves so again personal choice I'm not trying to force you into this I'm just saying maybe if you're humming and hurrying about the cockpit view or you're struggling with personal um, times trying to beat your own personal time maybe give it a go and just see if this is a way to improve it, especially because you're sitting over the front wheels. And so finally, viewers, as I wrap up part one of this two-part series, um, let me just go back to my favourite car again, because I think it is important to, to say that that narrow view in cockpit view, especially those of you that love cockpit view, which is absolutely fine, is only down to uh, the narrowest of cars that block your vision so much where uh, I feel that it inhibits your turning and the apexes to the corner because you just physically can't see them. So that, of course, applies as well to uh, the bonnet view. And there might be cars actually like the previous one because the previous one you barely see a bonnet you're actually almost sitting on the front bumper bar so i'll wrap up this video and say um please uh watch the next one 
where I do a hot lap and a personal best uh, to show you that example of the bonnet view in full. And I'll leave you now with uh, changing to the bonnet view in my favorite uh, road type car with the final uh, saying that what helps me in this is again if you notice where I am I'm sitting almost directly over the front wheels and I feel that's what gives me the advantage so as we let this go I can see clearly the apex and I can almost it's it's a subliminal thing I think for me maybe just because I'm so used to it is I can almost imagine where the front wheels are I think that's what helps me so it's like I can mentally place the front wheel see here to where um, they should be so as I run over this curb here it's like I know where the front wheel is and I can put the front wheel over over the curb to maximize that running and as I come through these bits, I can slow down enough there to put the right front wheel as close to that curb as possible. And I feel that that's what gives me the advantage. But all I'm saying in all of this is don't ditch cockpit view. Just give bonnet view or hood view a try and see if you like it. Especially in personal best hot lap times when you're absolutely going for it. Give it a try you know two or three goes maybe five goes if it doesn't work for you just simply go back that's the great thing and that's what i love about our um sort of bigger and bigger uh sim racing channels all getting together and all helping each other so this is my bit and let's move on to the next video then all right catch you next time see ya